What's going on everyone, this is Dom, and today we're talking about my favorite features in iOS 17. Let's jump into it. All right, so first off, I'm going to need two phones for this because we are testing out the live voicemail feature here in iOS 17. So I'm gonna call myself from this phone right here, and you can see if I pull up the call, I can actually send this to voicemail, and it will actually dictate what I'm saying on the screen. So let's go ahead and put this on speakerphone. Tom, please record your message. When you have finished- You'll be able to see it right here. Hey, we are testing out the live voicemail feature here on iOS 17, and it's dictating everything that I'm saying here in the message. So I can see what the call is about without actually having to answer the phone or know if I need to answer the phone. And of course, I can just jump in and accept it at any time right here during the dictation. So it's kind of a secret way to like spy on what people are leaving you messages for without actually having to talk to them or listen to the voicemail after they left it. You can see it all happening in real time right here. Pretty, pretty cool in my opinion. I don't know, I'd love to know what you think about these features though down in the comment section below. Next up, we are talking about some improvements to the Apple Maps app. And if you use this app, this is going to be good for you. I'm a big fan that they're putting this in here, but we actually have the ability to download on offline maps. So you can see right here we have a download button. If I go ahead and click that download button, it'll allow me to select an area of which I'd like to download. So let's just do Central Phoenix right here and we can tap on the download button and that will actually go ahead and save that offline map right there. You can see that it's loading up on the thing. So if we lose connection or anything or our service isn't working for whatever reason, we'll still have that map offline inside of the Maps app, which is pretty cool. And it gives you a notification, offline map download. Your offline map of Phoenix has been downloaded pretty pretty cool in my opinion I don't know it's a nice addition to Apple Maps and I'm glad to see Apple Maps is trying to get a little bit better next up we're talking about a very small little update to the UI inside of the messages app and you can see right here we have the same little plus sign right here but if we tap it we get a different little interface right here that allows us to choose from an audio message, camera, photo, stickers, Apple Cache, location, and then we have more right there at the bottom. Now the cool thing is you can actually tap and hold on these and move them around just as you could on iOS 16 when they are located like at the bottom in the little icons. But right here I think it just makes it a lot easier to have the audio uh, recording thing there at the top so I can go ahead and tap that and be able to record an audio message really easy. Like I said, this isn't a huge feature uh, update, it's just more of a UI update, but it's definitely one that I can appreciate, especially because I think this is a lot easier to use and navigate than it previously was. Next up, we're talking about a pretty cool feature inside of the Messages app. So this isn't UI related, but it is a new feature here. So if we go to stickers right here on the plus sign, you can see that we have various stickers here. We can actually go in here and add and make a custom sticker. So let's just choose this photo right here at the top that I did. That will actually automatically cut out the live photo and make it into an animated sticker. So I can go to add sticker here, and then I have that right down there in my stickers, which I can tap and hold and drop on a message or I can just tap on it and send it as a message. Uh, so we have either of these options here that I created, but you can also just do it from a very regular photo and make a sticker out of that. So let's take this meme right here and see, we can add sticker. You can just put that in there right there, be able to tap on it and then go ahead and send it off. And yeah, live, custom live photo stickers are pretty cool because like I said, it automatically chops out the background for you and then you can just go ahead and press add sticker and it'll add it into your sticker library, which I think it's pretty awesome. So next up, we are talking about standby mode, and this is really cool if you like having the like nostalgic like alarm clock look sitting on your nightstand or on your desk or something like that. When the iPhone is plugged in and turned in horizontal mode, uh, turned in landscape mode, you'll actually be able uh, to see a little interface pop up that kind of gives you like a, a little night nightlight slash like alarm clock look, and you can actually swipe through and customize the different features on here that it shows. Like you can have it show the clock and the calendar. You can have it show just a big clock. You can choose from different widgets to show on this uh, standby mode screen, which I think is pretty helpful. All right, so next up we have family passwords, and this allows you to share passwords from your password library with any member of your family. So let's say you wanna try to share that Netflix password or something, if you can get away with it. Well, you could just click on get started here, and then we're going to create a new family group, a new shared group. We can create that group, and then as you can see here, um, we're able to go ahead and select which passwords I would like to share with the group. So I can go ahead and choose any one of my passwords right here, go ahead and tap on it, and then I can move it to the password group, and you can see that it will then 
go ahead and share it with the password. So I have one member in my password group right here, and I'm sharing this password there at the bottom, which is pretty handy. I mean, you, you can have the iCloud password shared so to autofill and everything when they log in on on the app that or the website that they're trying to use from the shared password, it's going to be stored in iCloud for them to be able to use that. I think it's pretty helpful. Real quick though, I wanna give a huge shout out to channel sponsor Case Coup and their new Magic Stand case. This case is absolutely awesome because it does have the MagSafe connector point on the back side of it and it'll work with all of your MagSafe accessories, but this one is a little bit different because you can actually pull out this MagSafe portion and it's on a hinge so you can use it as a stand or you can use it to slip your fingers through for um, better grip on your phone. It is probably one of my favorite cases right now and I'm a huge fan of Case Q and this Magic Stand case. So if you wanna pick one up for yourself and even get a little discount, check out the link below in the description and you can use my code down there as well to save some money on a Magic Stand case for yourself. Big shout out to Case Q for sponsoring this video. All right, so next up we are talking about interactive widgets. Now we've had widgets on iOS for a little bit now but none of them have been as interactive as these are. Like for example, we have the music app widget right here. If I press play, I can actually play the music right from the widget screen without having to go into the app and play it. I can go ahead and pause it right there as well. If we swipe over here, um, I have a contact widget which will allow me to call my mom or send her a message. So if I tap on the little message icon, it'll pull up a message automatically for me and I can go ahead and uh, message her or I can tap on the call button to jump right into a call. We also have stuff like reminders right here where I can actually interact with the reminders. I can go ahead and check them off and you can see that they are disappearing right there. So it's pretty cool to have that interaction on these widgets. Like I said, it, we've had widgets for a while now. It's nothing special, but it's still pretty cool to have uh, these interactive widgets showing on uh, the home screen right here that you can do a lot more with. I mean, who doesn't want more functionality out of widgets? Cause that's kind of the point, right? All right, so this next one might seem silly to some people, but for me, it's a very welcomed addition. Inside of the clock app, we have the timers section and iOS 17 now allows us to add multiple timers. So I can go in there and add a timer for 15 minutes. I can tap on the plus sign again. And let's say we'll add another one for eight minutes. And so we have two timers going at the same time. I mean, look at how many timers we can have going. I, don't, I think it's limitless, or at least I'm not willing to find out the limit for how long these timers go, but it's cool because we can have like a different tone for each one and uh, them meaning different things. Like maybe one of them is time to get ready for bed. The other one is to check the oven and pull out the cookies or <laughs> whatever you wanna do. It's just nice having multiple uh, timers inside of the clock app because I know that's something that I've personally been wanting for a long time. Next up, we are talking about a very cool feature for accessibility. Now, if we scroll down to accessibility and we go all the way at the bottom, you can see this speech section right here. We have live speech and personal voice. Now, personal voice will allow you to create your own personal voice stored in here that can actually speak for you in your own voice. If we click on create personal voice right here, you can see that we have uh, some different, it's gonna tell us to record 150 different phrases out loud. It'll generate the personal voice and then you can communicate with the live speech feature. So if I press cancel on this, I already have my personal voice made up here at the top. And if I go ahead and go to live speech, we have to enable that and I can triple click the home, uh, the lock button right here. And you can see that we have this keyboard pop up for live speech. Now I can type in, hi, how are you doing? So I have that typed in. Once I press send, it's going to speak for me. Check this out, it's pretty crazy. Hi, how are you doing? So it doesn't exactly sound like me, but you get the point. Uh, we can go ahead and type in, what's up everyone, this is Dom. What's up everyone, this is Dom. And you can see it's, it's kind of uncanny a little bit. It's got uncanny valley for the voice going on, but it, it's just pretty cool what we're able to do. I mean, it would be nice if we could set that as like our own Siri voice. Wouldn't it be weird to have your Siri, your voice as Siri on the iPhone? I don't know, I'm sure that's coming up pretty soon, but live speech is a pretty cool feature for accessibility for anybody that uh, maybe doesn't wanna talk or your voice is out or whatever. Hello. I can have it in my own personalized voice that I made in the personal voice section of the accessibility settings. So pretty cool, I don't know, let me know what you think about that one down in the comments section. All right, and finally, my last favorite feature inside of iOS 17 is definitely going to have to be the uh, contact 
poster that we can make here. So if you can see, if I tap on my little contact uh, info right here inside of the contacts, I can actually go to edit and I can change this little poster right here that will appear when I call people. So you see how that looks when I'm calling somebody? That's how it's gonna look on their screen. So you're customizing something for the other person's screen and you can set this uh, up inside of, like I said, the contacts and we can go ahead and create new if I want to. I can go and add a photo if I'd like. Let's go ahead and just, oh, it suggested one for me. Let's just go ahead and tap on that one right there. I can put that up there and I can swipe between different styles. I can change the font size right here. I can make the font bigger or smaller. Let's go ahead and change that a little bit. Update the color and there you go. So there is a personalized little contact poster for me that you can see. That's how it will look when I call somebody else. So they'll see that on their screen, which I think it's pretty crazy, right? To be able to uh, change these uh, contact posters on here and you can have them per contact, I believe, as well, which is pretty cool. So if I go to customize, I can go ahead and select the poster. Again, I did this one with a little emoji right here and I can press done. I think that uh, this feature is pretty cool because it just gives you a little bit of personalization that will come through on the other end of the user who you're calling. So it's nothing very special. It's kind of cool to be able to have that set up. Like I said, I think you can do it on a per contact basis, but uh, either way, if it's just a general setting, I think that's pretty cool as well. But I don't know, this has been my favorite features in iOS 17. And like I said, I think this is a pretty cool update. There's not a whole lot going on, but there are some features that really make a difference in terms of usability in iOS. And I personally am happy to see stuff like that all the time. But I would love to know what your favorite feature of iOS 17 is down in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to hit the thumbs up button. If you're new around here to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can be notified when new videos like this drop in the near future. Once again, thank you so much for watching everyone. I really do appreciate it. This is Dom and I will catch you in the next video.